My name is Jan Seymour Ford. I'm a senior Dharma teacher with Empty Moon Zen, and we're based in Long Beach, California. And we're really glad to be here with, with you all tonight, here at Bright Cloud. So is the volume good? So just project. Okay. Shakespearean voice. <laughs> so for quite a while now, in my life, and in my practice, I've been in this very dark, quiet, empty-handed place. So I knew I had to do this Dharma talk for this session, and this past week I've been thinking, oh crap, I'm supposed to give this Dharma talk and I've got nothing. How am I going to keep talking for at least five minutes when I don't have anything to say? The good advice is always to give the talk you need to hear. Okay, so I guess I'll talk about having empty hands. A good start is always to find a great poem. Here's a wonderful one by Wendell Berry, entitled Our Real Work. It may be that when we no longer know what to do, we have come to our real work. And that when we no longer know which way to go, we have come to our real journey. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. The impeded stream is the one that sings. Lately, I've been baffled and not sure which way to go. And I feel like there's nothing in my hands. For a long time, I've been overcommitted. My commitments brought me great joy and the opportunity to serve others. But suddenly, alliances shifted, people left, uh, positions hardened, things just really changed. So for various reasons, a bunch of the commitments simply removed themselves from my hands. Um, my mother has congestive heart failure. Hmm? My mother has congestive heart failure, and that, that takes a lot of monitoring. It takes a lot of trips to doctors. Um, so that's, that's a very time-consuming commitment that's, that's increasing. Um, so aside from that, which is kind of the center, center, centerpiece of my life and focus right now, I've been thinking, I don't know what I should do. I don't know where I should engage. And that's okay. It's been a bit disorienting, and that's okay. But sometimes I forget to be grateful for this gift of not knowing. Sometimes I've fallen into feeling kind of off-centered and impatient. I'm a plow horse, and I kind of miss my old plow. In my daily life, I find myself grasping for the feeling of being focused on a goal, of having work to do and a community to do it in. In my practice, I feel the urge to fumble around and grab some spiritual tools and get busy, to refill those empty hands. When I feel this impatience, I realize I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting that for me anyway, this Zen practice is a practice of simplicity. I'm forgetting that empty hands are open hands, free of grasping and clinging, open to the needs of the world, my friends and family, ready to act. Most of all, I realize when I'm feeling off-centered and dissatisfied, I'm forgetting my breath and my body. When we welcome newcomers to our Sangha, we offer them an orientation to show them how we do our practice together most of the orientation focuses on our breath and our bodies. Our practice is based on presence, and we use the breath moving in and out of, our, out of our bodies as our anchor to the present moment. When we offer orientation to new practitioners, we emphasize that our breath, our practice, our presence is embodied. We are embodied. Sometimes it comes as a surprise to new practitioners. And sometimes I forget. Every once in a while, my practice calls me to give myself an orientation. I need to remember that the breath is moving through my body, and that is exactly my practice. That is how I experience presence. Every breath, sensation, pain in the knees, sweaty discomfort on a hot day, or sleepiness calls me to simply be present. When I forget my breath and my body, I'm clenched and rigid. When I'm impatient with not knowing, it feels like bewilderment and being unfocused. 
And when I remember my breath and my body, I remember to welcome not knowing, letting it fill me and remind me to be, simply be present. So looping back to that Wendell Berry poem, I really like this line. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. I think that's a lovely reminder that not knowing and stillness are the source of our engagement, our presence, and our work in the world. When we trust our not knowing, the work comes to us. For many years, I was in charge of a research library in the special education field. We subscribed to many newsletters and magazines that offer information and advice for parents of kids with special needs. Once I read an article that has really stayed with me. The authors were parents of, of a, a son with severe cognitive and physical impairments, and they shared their experiences in order to support and encourage other families with similar challenges. But here's what made the article memorable to me. Almost offhandedly, the parents said they'd had many meetings with well-meaning professionals who assured them that it was normal to feel angry and resentful because of their son's intense and lifelong needs and disappointed because he would never live up to their dreams for him. The parents wrote that they were perplexed by these conversations. They weren't sure why they didn't feel resentful or dissatisfied, confused and overwhelmed sometimes, but not resentful about their son's condition and not colored by expectations of entitlement. They were hum humble, generous people, and they weren't congratulating themselves. They just didn't dwell on the way their son, the ways that their son could be different. They were grateful that they had the ability to meet his needs and loved him the way he was. The authors mentioned that they were both second generation immigrants from Thailand. They wondered if their Buddhist beliefs might have some influence on their outlook. I never forgot this article because these loving parents are my Sangha mates teaching me, reminding me about not knowing. They didn't cling to certainties or fixed ideas about what life owed them or how it should be different. They met their son and his challenges with open hands. They were simply present with him, meeting his needs and doing what was necessary. Their teaching was generous and heartfelt and it reached beyond their peers with similar family issues and touched my heart. They reminded me that ours is a practice of open hands and not knowing. When my hands cling to certainties, to self-importance, to inflexible goals, I'm forgetting my breath and my body. I'm shrinking away from them. When my hands are empty, when I don't know, I'm invited into stillness and simple presence. And finally, here's a line from Rumi. What a relief to be empty, then God can live your life. So, thank you. Thank you.